All right, we want to welcome Greg Oliver to the show. I think most people listening to this would have read his piece that was on Sports Illustrated yesterday, the, the website. The, uh, the title of the story, DNA says these five strangers were all fathered by the same wrestler, and The Rock is their half-brother. Greg Oliver, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. So uh, I, I'll ask the first question, then we'll let Dave go. Uh, when I was reading this, I like it's like one of those moments where you're reading something and you go, oh, wow, this is very interesting. And then you're sort of like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. Like that happened to me like three or four different times reading this. I was just continually like surprised, like, oh, wow, oh, wow. What has been the, the reception from the public reading this? Well, first, thank you. That's a, that's a nice way to put it, that it just engrosses you more and more. And that's uh, sort of the case of this whole story, how long it took. But it's been interesting. There's been lots of nice responses from fellow journalists and some fans and, and people that I know. But I haven't seen a lot of reaction from people actually in the industry, whether it's the movie industry or whether it's the wrestling industry or sports in general, I guess. I, you know, are they all just scared of saying of the rock or do they all have their little skeletons in the closet like this, too, they don't want to talk about? I don't know. I just I'm throwing it out there because it seems bizarre. But by and large, people are fascinated by the story. And there's been a lot of people also sharing similar stories, as in, you know, my dad was not actually my dad. I learned about that when I was 38. And those kind of stories. And there's a lot more of them out there than we know about. Uh, unfortunately, that's reality. And, and technology and things like 23andMe, where you can learn about your family's DNA, has made a lot of these kind of stories a lot more, I don't know, easy to do <laughs> or easy to generate, I guess. Or, or well, people people are aware of it. Like in, in, in another era, they just wouldn't, you know, like the story that you did, you know, so much of that has to do with DNA testing that like in another generation, like these people never would have found each other, most likely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Or, or would have been luck of the draw or, or Rocky Johnson and, 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 would have and, actually had to say, these are my kids. And, and, and face, you know, you know, a lot of it had to do with Facebook and Ricky Johnson, is right? So being a guy who was receptive to these people as opposed to like hanging up the phone to them, so, so to speak, right? Yeah, it's, it actually, Facebook or Meta should be jumping all over the story because it really is like Facebook brought them together. And that was part of how we really figured out some of the timeline, because there's a lot of complicated timeline in a piece like this, try, trying to figure out who met who, when they were all born, all those kind of things. But Facebook, you know, well, when did you become Facebook friends with this person? Okay, well, that helps us start there. And then when did you reach out? And then we try to figure that out after that. So it was, yeah, Facebook was actually beneficial to both their lives and this story. So now, how how long did you know? I mean, I mean, like, again, like, this kind of floored me in a lot of ways. I mean, I, I can't say, like stunned stunned but still pretty stunned you know when when i woke up and read the story because um you know it's it's like it's just one of those things where it's i mean, i'm reading it and it's like something that's like yeah i can certainly buy that this wrestler who goes from territory to territory all over canada and and you know in those days of what wrestlers did but like it, it's you know it's like these, these people are all in their 50s you know what i mean it's like, wow. Yeah, it's, it's almost like the callousness of it all, too. Like, he was obviously, it was just a pattern. Um, and then yeah. he kept doing it. Uh, but we tried to make it not a real negative thing on Rocky. I mean, obviously, you're going to draw your own conclusions uh, from this, that he had nothing to do with these kids. And he definitely knew about uh, at least three or four of them, if not the fifth one, which was the one that came out after he died. So... You know, you, you draw your own conclusions there, but the the gist of the story really is that they found each other, as we just mentioned, and, and they've become their own little family in and of themselves, even if uh, Dwayne The Rock has known about these guys at least since uh, Rocky died. So this is not news to him. I know it, it appears that way, the way that story is sort of put out there on social media, but he definitely knows about them and has known about this story for at least a month. And as well as uh, Curtis and Wanda, who are Rocky's first family, legit family. He was married to Una. Um, so those children knew about most of these, too. And, and they're a little bit shaken, um, but they also knew this was coming. I, I, like, at some point, it has to come out, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just so, so it was just a, a, a fascinating 
just a fascinating story. And, you know, um, all the different aspects of, of, you know, meeting them. And, um, you know, I mean, I tell you what, the one, the, one, the other thing in, in the, the, the heartbreak of the kids that knew, um, you know, um, I mean, that was really something, it, you know, like where, you know, and, and, you know, the one with the, 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 the picture on the wall waiting for her dad to call her yeah. that never did. I mean, that was really heartbreaking. And then, um, you know, was it's, uh, Lisa is, is the one yeah, from Vancouver. Um, yeah. Yeah. From, from Vancouver, you know, getting into the movie business, but being so, you know, paranoid, not wanting to work in the United States because of the, the fear of crossing paths with Dwayne. And then Dwayne comes to Vancouver and the mental anguish that she went through over it. I mean, cause, cause again, like when you're reading the story, like you don't expect it to that aspect of the story, you know, you, it's like, that was just like, um, you know, the, de the depth of that was something, you know, we, we did try to really explore the, the pain. Uh, and that was one thing I know I went back for that. They asked for more of that. I, like, that sounds really kind of crass to say it like that, but that's not what I meant by the editor asking for that. Just saying, let's explore their pain a little bit more. Um, and, and Lisa especially was, she's the anchor of the piece in many ways, but they all have their own pain. They all dealt with it in different ways. Aaron, who's the youngest, grew up with a father figure. So he has a whole different kind of perspective on all this than the rest of them. And there's times in the, in the story there where they talk about mom never dated again. She was still in love with Rocky like years and years later, and he just broke her heart. She couldn't love another man. Though that's just horrible. Like, and that's, that says something. I don't know what it says about what Rocky did to them. But that that was the case in, in every case except Aaron. So, yeah, I wish you could go back in time and erase some of these things that happened to these kids, but they did. And it's not exclusive to wrestling, right? It happens whether there's truck drivers or rodeo guys or just, you know, the guy down the street, the mailman, you know, fathers a kid and leaves it. it it's not unique to wrestling by any means. Greg, you know, the, how, how much um, in, in doing research for the piece – do, do, how familiar are you with you know the twenty three and me and and a lot of that stuff? Because I've seen more people uh, my age. I'm in my for, for, I'm in my mid forties uh, because we we sort of you know the internet is, is in existence for us when we're like in high school and college, and they're not afraid to sort of go you know use this technology now. An older generation maybe a little bit more afraid did you get any did, did was there any apprehension from the 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 family of like oh, do i really want to to try and you know this 23 and me stuff i i hear that you know because there's a lots of there's lots of theories about what they do with your data and you know what they can do <laughs> for you know all that stuff right but uh, i know that there's some apprehension with that stuff and i wonder if a story like this you know, sort of eases that apprehension for people who may have been worried to, to, to get into this? That's a good question. It, it's not something that actually crossed my mind because they, they'd all done their tests before I got involved in the story. Um, so I met everybody, at, or three of them, at uh, Rock, Ricky Johnson's 65th birthday party, and that sort of started the ball rolling. Um, so they, they'd done the test. They already knew about each other, except for Aaron, who comes later. Uh, so, but that's an excellent point that, that a lot of people would think about this differently, uh, that it's a chance to really learn about your own things. Uh, even working on the Medusa Michelli book, uh, which is coming out next spring from ECW Press, I mean, at one point she talks about looking into um, getting the testing done because she never knew her father growing up. And so she goes sort of down that road and finds out her grandmother who wasn't who she said she was. So, you know, there's good and bad that come out of these DNA tests. Sometimes you, your world gets shaken a little bit more than you think it will. Well, I mean, at what point did, I mean, you mentioned that, that like, um, Dwayne knew about the story a month ago, but, but at what point, like, did you, um, I mean, you, you, I think you mentioned you've been working on this for like a year and at, uh, you know, like what was kind of like the impetus of everything, you know, um, learning of it and then, you know, how did that kind of, how did the whole thing kind of, you know, happen? So, as I mentioned, I, I went to, you know, Ricky Johnson's 65th birthday party. He's known, some, he's someone I've known forever. As in, I was a teenager back when we first met Dave, what was that, about 88? So yeah. I, I would have met Ricky Johnson around the same time. 
And he was one of those guys around Toronto that let me into the locker room, that let me sort of understand how pro wrestling worked when you're still a teenager doing a wrestling newsletter. So we've, you know, stayed in touch ever since. And he's the conduit to make it all happen. He's the one helping me understand who everybody is. He's the one that knows some of the other family details, including his own grandparents. He's not the most reliable source, so obviously you have to do a lot of work. Um, in the past, but, you know, I've sat down with Ada, my via, The Rock's mom, so I had some of that background about how that family worked. I knew Curtis, and I'd talked to Wanda. Uh, I'd, I'd interviewed Rocky many times. In fact, at some point, Rocky and I had talked about me writing his autobiography. We had a contract done up by ECW Press that I had signed, and he didn't, and then he ghosted me. Um, there's no hard feelings there in that case, other than, you know, you should have... Probably lucky. Yeah, I'm probably lucky. Exactly. But you should have the decency at least to call somebody and say, I'm not going to work with you. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Um, and he worked with Scott Teal, who I helped anyway. And Scott Teal ended up getting sort of screwed out of uh, both money, time, headaches, all kinds of things that went on. Uh, so I did dodge a bullet. I'm not denying that. And, but there's no real hard feelings there. I ended up with other projects that have led me to even my biggest projects yet are coming out next spring. So you never know where the road's going to go. Um, but again, Rocky, I'd, I'd accumulated all this stuff. I had actually got an email from one of these kids' daughters, like back in 2008, when I was doing slam wrestling things for the Canadian Hall of Fame. Why doesn't Rocky Johnson ever talk about his family back in Amherst? And so that was, I guess, a little seed in the back of my mind. And at some point, I know I asked Rocky about it. I don't have anything on the record. But I'm sure I asked him about, you know, what about this kid? And you get that sort of typical silence you get when they don't want to talk about something. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it was a seed that was planted a long time ago that took place over the last 14 months. Pandemic obviously complicates things. Uh, but basically, I was encouraged to find a bigger home for it than slamwrestling.net. As much as I love my website, uh, I was encouraged to try to find a magazine, and I shopped it around a lot, which is part of that seven, 14 months. Uh, but Sports Illustrated, John Wortham, believed in the project and uh, put me in touch with the right people. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.